In this video, we will finish up our discussion of finding roots of equations. So we'll continue talking about open methods, and in this video we're going to focus on the secant method. So the secant method is an alternative to the newton raphson method that is used by replacing the derivative f prime of x with its finite difference approximation. So the secant method then does not require the use of derivatives. So it can be used when uh, f prime of x is difficult to obtain or is not explicitly defined. So we start with the newton raphson equation where the next estimate of our root xi plus 1 is equal to the current estimate of our root xi minus f of xi divided by f prime of xi. And then we use the backward finite difference approximation for the derivative. So the backward finite difference approximation says that f prime of xi can be approximated by f of xi minus f of xi minus 1 divided by xi minus xi minus 1. And we'll see this uh, graphically shortly. So then if we um, plug this into our previous equation for um, with this approximation of the derivative, then we can see that our, our next estimate of our root xi plus 1 is equal to xi minus f of xi times xi minus xi minus 1 divided by f of xi minus f of xi minus 1. So this is the formula um, that describes the iterations for the secant method. So as you can see, this requires two initial guesses, so um, x0 and, and x1, which becomes become xi minus 1 and xi in our uh, expression. And so x0 and x1 are then used to find uh, x2. And then x1 and x2 are used to find x3, uh, etc. So we can visualize this um, graphically. So we have this function f of x with some root. So we have our two initial guesses, um, or our two estimates, xi and xi minus 1. And we can see uh, the value of the function at those um, estimates. So the difference um, in the f value is delta f. The difference in the x is delta x. So we can use that to estimate the derivative of the function or the tangent to the function. Um, so the approximate slope f prime of xi um, then gives us our new estimate xi plus 1. And so um, again, here we have uh, basically plugging in our approximate derivative um, in the newton raphson formula, it gives us our secant formula. So as we said, this is the approximate derivative here. So let's look at an example. Um, again, we're going to consider the same function that we talked about uh, previously, where f of x is equal to sine 5x plus cosine 2x. And we've seen a plot of this function before on the interval from minus 1 to 1. And we're going to start with an initial two initial guesses, x uh, is um, x0 is 0.5 and x1 is 0.4 to find the root with an error tolerance of 0 0.0005. So we're going to be starting um, 0.5 and 0.4 um, and looking for uh, this root here. So um, this is the output from the MATLAB code with x is 0.5 and x, x0 is 0.5 and x1 is 0.4. Um, so you can see that the method converges very quickly and finds the root at um, 0 0.6732. And this is the uh, approximate relative error over those iterations. Um, I'm starting to plot the approximate relative error in this case at uh, 2 because you see that my error here was is just my dummy value of 1 to start the um, iterations. And you can see how this progresses. So in this um, demonstration here, this is the, the plot of my function from 0 to 1. So my two initial guesses were 0 0.5 and 0 0.4. And then I can find the value of my function at those two initial guesses. The 
line between them gives me my um, approximate um, slope or my tangent at that point and then that I continue that down to until it intersects the x-axis and that gives me my new estimate of um, of the root so then in this next iteration now my guesses are or my estimates are 0.4 and this one out here which was 0.74 and then we draw the line between them and where that line intersects the x-axis gives us my next estimate of the root which in this case was 0.6668 so then here we're using um, the 0.743 and the 0.6668 draw a line between them where that intersects the x-axis that gives us our next estimate which is 0.673 um, and then we can see that here and now we've you can't really see the lines anymore but we've converged um, on the root there so we can talk about convergence of the secant method similar to how we did for the newton raphson method um, with the newton raphson method we saw that the um, convergence was quadratic so the error in um, in each uh, iteration um, is proportional to the square of the previous error. So for the secant method, the error changes with each iteration according to um, this expression. So ei plus 1 is proportional not to ei squared, but to ei to the power of 1.618034. So this indicates that the convergence is not quite quadratic. Um, so the method converges slightly slower than the newton raphson method, uh, but it still converges relatively fast. And if you want to see the details of how this is, um, how we arrived at this, you can take a look at uh, the derivation on um, the website notes, um, the Samaradib website notes. And um, similar to the newton raphson method, convergence is not guaranteed, and it depends on the behavior of the function and the initial guesses. Um, and the similar kind of pitfalls of the newton raphson method apply to the secant method as well.